Thank you, Tess. The Packers and Cowboys, no strangers to each other. They played for the NFL championship in 1967. It was the ice ball. Bart Starr's game-winning sneak gave Green Bay its third straight title. And then the Cowboys knocked the Packers out of the playoffs in the 90s three straight years. That included the NFC championship in 95, which led to the Cowboys' third title in four seasons. The Packers blew out the Cowboys in primetime 2010 behind three touchdowns from Aaron Rodgers. Dallas fell to one and seven and then fired Wade Phillips four years later. It was Tony Romo who connected. Oh, boy. Marcus knows it well with Des Bryant at Lambeau in the playoffs. The catch. Or so it seemed. Anyway, the Cowboys earned the top seed during Dak Prescott's rookie year but still couldn't beat the Packers. Jared Cook's 36-yard catch set up Mason Crosby's game winner. And then the following October, Rodgers ripped out the Cowboys' hearts again. He led a 15-point comeback and hit Devontae Adams for the game winner with 11 seconds to play. There is history between these two teams. It is a great matchup, and we're going to talk about the game plan or what it should be, what we feel like it should be for each of these teams. Let's start with the Cowboys. That offense stalled last week. What do you think they should do? I would copycat a lot of what the Eagles did, and that's play with 12 personnel, meaning put two tight ends on the field. Green Bay just wants to continually play in dime coverage, which is really having one linebacker on the field. I'd put both those tight ends on the field, and let's run the football. I'd make these safeties playing at a linebacker level see the run game, see how to fit the run game. Where are they supposed to send the football, whether it's inside or outside? I'd also get this 12 personnel and run some RPOs. Again, if you're going to play with one linebacker in the middle field, five guys at the line of scrimmage, you can't defend my RPO game. I would go with a bunch of wide zone down to the tight ends, allowing my offensive linemen to get out in space and run these big five defensive linemen that Green Bay wants to put on the line of scrimmage, get them running side to side. 12 personnel run game, some RPO, and get this defensive line moving just like the Eagles did. All right, all that's well and good. So that's the Cowboys offense. On the other side of that equation will be a Packers defense that should do what? Mike Pettin. Get the run fit straightened out. Mm. It doesn't matter that they're in dime personnel. It's not really the personnel as much as what he's doing with them and them understanding their assignment. This right here is just a, a missed assignment. All right? The safety came in with, his, with the tight end who cracked, and he should have just stepped up and made the play in the hole. Here's a linebacker misfitting. All right, Brent Martinez, he should be in the B gap. He steps into the A gap. All right. Two plays right there, 40 yards of rushing offense off misfits. He's got to clean up the misfits. I don't know if y'all remember that I told y'all last week, but I said the Eagles would need to run the football. I think, I mean, I, mean, I just. But didn't you pick the Packers? Uh, I think so. But I said the Eagles need to get back to the football. the Eagles. I mean, if we're going to get it, I told you so. I feel uh, like I should be included in this. Add that, Wendy. Yeah, you got to you got to take your victories in this business. I know, right? Take your You're going to you take it. a lot of L's. You got to get victories. I, all I got is L's. It's like a permanent L. All right, listen. Uh, X factor here when you got the Cowboys on offense and the Packers on defense. Yeah, listen. Nobody's talking about this, but the, one of the best left tackles in the game won't be playing in this game more than likely in Tyron Smith. So Cam Fleming versus Darius Smith. This is the biggest change for Green Bay's all defense this year is they have two viable, legit pass rushers on the outside between Preston Smith and Zadarius Smith. So Cam Fleming is going to have to come into this game and figure out how to protect the backside of Dak Prescott. And I'm sure if, if Kellen Moore is in his salt in what we think he is as an offensive coordinator, there will be adjustments and little wrinkles to make sure that they protect the backside. That's a great so, point. And, and, and you got to figure – And we Kellen Moore for exactly this absolutely. reason. Absolutely. And you got to figure out how can you still keep Zeke in, in the game as far as getting him the ball and you utilizing him in the pass game, but also maybe being over there to help Chip when Cam Fleming's in the game. Well, Zeke was a non-factor last week. In fact, some of the low, lowest rushing totals I mean, how of his weird career. Is that it was just to say? a little bit bizarre. All right, let's flip the script and talk about the Packers' offense. Well, the, the Dallas defense is really good. They're relatively simple, but they're an incredibly aggressive defense. So you got to take that to your advantage if you're the Packers offense, especially without a guy named Devonta Adams. I would screen this Cowboys defense to death. Running back screens, tight end screens, play action screens. I would utilize their aggressiveness of wanting to get field to my advantage. I'd get some zone sweep action where I handed it off to him, but also faked it and allowed my run game going downhill. Get these linebackers 
step inside to side to try to defend some zone sweeps and mix in some reverses. Again, not only to take advantage of their aggressive style on defense, but maybe get them to play just a little bit hesitant, knowing that I've got stuff coming the other way. But I'd screen them. I'd jet sweep them. I'd reverse them. And if you're going to drop back, the ball better get out of your hands quickly because that defensive line is really good. Coach? It is good. And we're looking for turnovers, all okay. right? We want to get – we're going to see an example of the Dallas Cowboys and the secondary being very advantageous right here. The D-line gets a little pressure, roll out. Okay, and what you're going to see is tips and overthrows. And then those. We got to get those. <laughs> Come on, Marcus. Where's my backing on it when I need you? All right, and then the defensive line, Rod Marinelli, one of the best in the game at teaching his defensive line how to get pressure on the quarterback. And Rod Marinelli will be important this week because they need to get a, a, a lot of pressure on Aaron Rodgers. All right, I asked it when we were talked about the reverse. I'll ask it this way then. Packers offense, Cowboys defense, X factor, Marcus. Aaron Jones in this run game. Okay. Um, because if you become one dimensional, we just mentioned it, against this football team with the pass rushes that they have, you are tremendously playing from, from behind. The, the speed of Jalen Smith and Leighton Vanderess sometimes gets them in trouble and they over pursue. So Aaron Jones, when he finds those little, that light of a four or a five yard carry and not for Green Bay to get frustrated with sometimes getting three and a half because as a defense, you don't want them to get three and a half. The run game has to have success if you're going to beat the Dallas Cowboys because this defense is opportunistic, but they also have two linebackers that can track the ball on a high level. Devontae Adams yeah. likely not to play is going to be a Ooh, big thing a big to overcome. One. No doubt. All right, that's, no a, that's a big advantage for the Cowboys if he doesn't play. Yeah, that's a, yeah. That's a W before you start anyway, not at the end of the day, but at least to start.